So what have you been working on this winter? Well, I made me a new jacket and I made some, I was working on making me some placemats for summertime when I put up my summertime curtains. This is a, a new stitch I've learned and I'll, I just love to do it. It's pretty. You're making green and yellow? Green and yellow and pink. And pink. Yeah, that's the pink ones right there. You throw me one. I think my curtains are green are green and yellow and pink. So I think they'll make pretty placemats. Mm -hmm. Always dropping my needle. Yeah. So you'll be ready for spring with those colors. Yeah, spring and summer. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They're my favorite ones. Favorite times of the year? Yeah. Yeah. When you were a, a girl, what was winter like? Did you try to stay in? Everybody stay in? or? Well, if it come a snow, we'd get out and make snowmen. And we'd make snow cream. Eat it. So we always found some way to enjoy mm -hmm. the winter time too. Mm -hmm. So one big snow that you've told me about is coming up pretty quick happened on your birthday. Of course you don't remember oh, it, but no, what they told you no. about it. My mother told me when I was born the snow was up over the porch. And that was a big snow. Yeah, and that was March 6th, so that would be here before long. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we may get some more snow in March, February and March. Yeah, so it's, did she... Sometimes it'll even snow a little in April. Yeah, so did she have you, she had you at home, so she didn't have to worry about going nowhere, but whoever come to help her had to worry about getting there, I guess. Um, the doctor came to the house, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think all Mama's children were born at home. Mm -hmm. So by the time you come along, though, she kind of already knew what it was all about. Yeah, she she did. She was a pro at having babies. Yeah. Uh, this time of the year, did your family begin to look forward to eating out of the garden, the fresh stuff? Yeah, they they love to make a garden. And we had uh, green onions and garlic and potatoes. Mm -hmm. new stuff from the garden. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was little, you know, I got foundered on new potatoes mm -hmm. and green peas. Yeah. For a long time I couldn't eat them. Yeah, yeah. So if you've not heard that vi that story, you can, I'll link to that video, Granny Tells That Story. Uh, but even as in, in my lifetime, even as you were an adult, you still, this time of the year, began to look forward to, I think that's a common thing for people everywhere, not just in Appalachia, they began to look forward to those fresh things out of the garden. Mm -hmm. So good to go to the garden and get you a ripe tomato. Tastes so much better than what you get in the store, mm -hmm. for sure, yeah. And when you were a girl, you couldn't even go to the store and get a tomato in the winter. No. Yeah. No wasn't like it is now yeah so we really have it made now by going to the stores in the winter time you can even buy fresh strawberries they come from california or florida yeah somewhere yeah. else not as good but they're still available yeah still. yeah so probably when you were a girl, your some of your favorite things to eat in the winter when you think about sweet stuff, I guess, was either cakes and pies or then you had jellies put up and probably applesauce and stuff like that, dried fruit, those kind of things. Yeah, Mama was a good cook. She always made good homemade jelly and good cakes. She was a wonderful cook. Everybody liked to eat her cooking. Mm -hmm. And she cooked so much. Mm -hmm. She had such a big family, she had to. Mm -hmm. And she was probably used to cooking for her own family since she was one of the oldest children. Was She was the oldest child in her family. Yeah. And it was a big family. And then so she probably grew up cooking for a big crowd and then had a big crowd of her own. Yeah. Did she work, um, didn't she work in a logging camp where she cooked also? Yeah, she did. When her daddy was first married, he worked in a logging camp and she cooked she told me that. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I think here, years ago, she would cook lunch at her house and take it to the school kids at Culberson. And uh, there was nobody else around that could do that, you know. She lived close to the school. Mm -hmm. And they told me she'd cook for all the school kids and take it to school. Mm, makes you wonder, wonder if she got paid for that, maybe. Oh, I'm sure they yeah. did. She wouldn't have. Yeah, she couldn't afford she it to do it. She couldn't afford it unless yeah. they paid her. Yeah. Mm. But she was a really good cook. I'd like to have some of her good biscuits now. Mm. She made the best <laughs> she, biscuits. Yeah, she did. Mm. What was the first car that, that your mother and father had? Do you remember them having a car, or did they ever have a car? No, they never owned a car. But their uh, their daughters always took them places, mm -hmm. you know, because they had cars and mm -hmm. could drive. And yeah. So they, neither uh, your mother or your father ever learned to drive, neither one of them? No, no, oh. no. Yeah. So they would just hitch a ride with anybody that was going to town or what, where they needed to go or if they well, needed Well, they'd to. have some of their children to drive them, mm -hmm. you know, when they needed to go. They just didn't feel it was necessary? No, it really wasn't necessary because they had somebody to take them, you know, it was real handy. Mama always made fruit cakes, and I asked her one time, I said, Mom, had, why do you make so many fruit cakes? Because she said it just takes one egg for a fruit cake. Mm. <laughs> you know, you put the egg in the dough, yeah. and then you have the fruit for the icing. Yeah, and so she was being uh, frugal, but also with a big family, she needed the eggs to probably feed at breakfast or to do other things with, yeah. so she was yeah. being... Um, serving something good, but that's what she told me about her fruit cakes. Yeah, I asked her why she made so many, and of course we loved them. Mm -hmm. She could make really good fruit cakes. So that's, she said that was her reason. But yeah, it took a lot of eggs, mm -hmm. you know, to feed our family. Mm -hmm. That was one of those things she had and, learned by cooking for large crowds, how to stretch it out. And she cooked three meals a day and put it on the table. And I've never even done that in my lifetime. Maybe I'd have breakfast and uh, the kids would go off to school and then we'd have supper. Mm -hmm. But Mama cooked three meals a day. Mm -hmm. She was in the habit of doing that. It was totally different life that we had, and I didn't realize how good I had it made growing up, because Mama liked to do everything. She didn't ask us to do nothing much. She was a really good cook, and so I never tried to learn to cook. I told Jerry when we was courting, I said, now I've got to tell you that I don't know how to cook. And he said, don't worry, I'll teach you. <laughs> <laughs> so he had learned to cook. Yeah, he he was he learned it in service, you know. Yeah. And he learned it from his mother and his family too, you know. But I think in service they have what they call KP duty. Because they have to cook for the, mm -hmm. all the servicemen. So he did teach you how to cook? Well, <laughs> he could always cook anything. He cooked better than I could. But I remember the first time I got brave enough to cook a turkey, I was on the phone asking Mama how to do it. <laughs> and uh, we had a turkey dinner. and His uncle from Canton came by and ate his turkey dinner with us. and. His daughter, one of his daughters was with him. Mm -hmm. And I think her little, his little grandson, her little boy. So who was that? Which uncle? Uh, Jim, the one mm -hmm. that was okay. a preacher. Yeah. 
And I think the girl's name was Wanda Lou mm -hmm. or Wanda. Yeah, he had a daughter named Wanda. Where did you live then? Were you living not here? Yeah, we lived in the rented house we rented. In Murphy or in uh, no, at March, March Creek. Creek at Sherlock's? Sherlock's we rented. Mm. Yeah, it was a pretty little house. Mm. Well, was your turkey good, your first turkey? It was very good, mm. yeah. But I was, remember I was on the phone that was the first time I ever got brave enough to cook a turkey. Because I'd always just go to Mama's for Thanksgiving dinner. But I decided it was time for me to learn how. But I was on the phone asking her questions about mm -hmm. what to do. But it turned out good. We had a good meal. So once you were uh, married and you did learn how to cook, of course you could call Granny for uh, your mother for instructions or for advice about it. Who else taught you to cook? You said Daddy taught you a few things, but I know he didn't teach you everything. His mother was a real good cook too. And uh, she she made biscuits. She didn't put shortening in her biscuits. She just put fresh cream and she made really good biscuits. Mm -hmm. That's and, uh, uh, Paul even today likes Mamma, we called her, her, her cream style corn. That's the way Paul wants his now, the way she mm -hmm. cooked it. She was a real good cook too. She come up here one day and I was canning a homemade soup and she said no you know, don't you, you don't have to pressure that for 15 minutes. And I said, no, I didn't know. I'm glad you <laughs> come to see mm -hmm. me, told me. Because mm -hmm. green beans, you have to pressure them for 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long I would have cooked my soup or pressured it if, if she hadn't told me. Mm -hmm. So she was always a big help anything about cooking. She cooked for the folk school, you know. Mm -hmm. One time her and Barbara Coker's mother cooked for the folk school. Of course, it wasn't that big back then, mm. but they, whoever was in charge wrote out the menu and they had to fix what was on the menu. Mm. So they was really good cooks there too at the folk school. What do you think some, when you think about, you know, I'm always talking about Appalachia, so, which is where you've lived your whole life, but um, when you think about your favorite foods, what's your favorite foods that kind of represent Appalachia? I like turkey and dressing. I like biscuits and gravy, and I like chocolate gravy. Mm -hmm. That's some of my favorite mm -hmm. things. You love sausage? Sausage, yeah. I really like homemade fresh sausage. I really like it. Mm -hmm. Cornbread and beans, of course. Cornbread. My biscuits are just not as good as Mama's, but we got used to my biscuits. Mm -hmm. Your biscuits are good. I tried to make my biscuits like your biscuits, and I couldn't. Remember when I was first married, and then you told me about Mama Marie's biscuits, and that's how I started making them, because mm -hmm. I could never do them like you did. Mm -hmm. She made good biscuits of it. Mm -hmm. Really good. She was a good cook. Good. In the winter time, we'd always make us a big pan of fudge, and he did. We'd have snow cream and homemade fudge. Um, I know Granny Gazzy liked to cook. Like you said, she cooked for such a big crowd her whole life. I guess it was just second nature, but she must have enjoyed it or she wouldn't have kept doing it after her kids was grown because oh, I know she she, she yeah. would cook enough for everybody to come eat. She, that's, she wanted us to come and eat with her. Yeah. What about your older sisters? Did any of them cook? Oh, yeah. They all cooked. They I was, mean, were they as crazy about it as, as Gazzy? Maybe Faye, was she a big cook? She was a real good cook, Faye was and always made a lot of cakes and pies. And they were all good cooks. Dorothy was a really good cook. Mm -hmm. She made really good biscuits. Hers was a little different from Mama's, but they was really good. Mm -hmm. um, 
probably their greatest desire in cooking. Of course, they all like to eat. Who doesn't like to eat? You want it to taste good, but was to serve their family. Um, reminds me, you remember when Corey was little, she said she wanted to be a cooker because it made people happy. Yeah. She had figured it out, even as a little girl. Yeah. But that's probably one of the reasons that they all like to. And yeah. you, too, why you like to cook is to please your family. Of course, mm -hmm. you're eating it, too. That's a bonus, but it's mostly to please your family. Mm-hmm and your friends and your neighbors mm -hmm. and whoever comes by like the mm -hmm. uncle jim coming in for thanksgiving yeah it's a it's a blessing to cook for your family and now with the supermarkets you can go to the store and about it buy about anything you need if you want to make a peach pie strawberry pie in the winter time. Mom always canned a lot of peaches and I guess Mamma did too. But we always had sometimes just nearly always had a bowl of peaches on the table. You could eat all of them you wanted. She just didn't always make pies, she just put a bowl of peaches on the table. And that was the dessert. Mm -hmm. So I know she didn't grow peaches, and I don't think Mama Marie did either. They're kind of finicky where we're at. Almost always they get, a lot frost of times bit. they get frostbit, yeah. Yeah, it's hard so to grow peaches. So where did she get her peaches? Uh, somebody would come around with a truckload selling peaches, and she'd get a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. Probably from further south? Yeah, they'd go to uh, South Carolina and get a load of peaches, and they'd come by our house selling them. Mm. So that was real handy. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me wish somebody do that today, don't it you? Mm. <laughs> that People be handy. do go now, but they just take them to the flea market to yeah. sell them. Yeah. They don't go to produce stands. directly to somebody's house. Yeah, with them. produce stands, of course, are getting them from somewhere else too. But yeah, it'd be handy if they just pulled up to your house and said, I've got bushel of pizzas, do you mm. want them? Mama canned peaches. She made homemade kraut. She canned corn, pickled corn, pickled corn and beans. So that stuff really helps out in the winter time. Yeah. Do you think people should be um, that we've lost something because people are not dependent? There's it's a double-edged sword, of course. Uh, we're more grateful that we can go to the grocery store and get the strawberries or peaches in the middle of the winter or whatever you want, even though they're not as good. Um, but do you think we've lost out on having to live close to our food and know where it come from and put it up with our own hands? Uh, some people don't care nothing. Mm -hmm. you yeah. know? I just mostly make homemade soup and canned green beans. But some people don't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, you make jelly and you do pickles and yeah, yeah. I do pickles yeah. and jelly and, it, and kraut. And kraut. Yeah. It's a lot of help. Yeah, yeah. In the winter time. Yeah. But it's just a different time. Young people, so many of them have to work. Mm -hmm. They can't really do like the old timey people did. Right. Yeah. They have to be on a job, and it's hard to do that stuff when you work on a public job, too. Mm 